It's a lost game. Screw it. It's Stefano. Man, it's Stefano versus Clem. Oh my god, how can I say no to that? I guess that's how everyone is feeling. Stefano versus Clem. This should be game number three. Uh, but it seems like they've been having really long games. So they were. Uh, uh, their number ga two game was starting. Oh, and it's on King's Cove as well. We are in a. You know what? We're just lucky people. We're lucky to be alive. We're lucky to be watching this. I'm very lucky to be casting this. I cannot believe it. Game number three. I do believe this is game number three. I'm gonna assume that it is. So it's. Game oh, pause. Clem already pausing the game. Clem needs a sec. Score. Should be 1 1. Yeah, there we go. No shame for him. Oh, Clem. I am a fanboy of Clem as well. Like, just, oh my god, I'm a fanboy of Clem, the up-and-comer, and then Stefano, the returning king, the returning foreigner king of the Zerg race. Game resumed. What a guy, what a guy. Let's see. Just want to see their player camps for a second here. Oof. Back onto Clem. Seems like they're in good condition to go. <laughs> None of them seem too, too tired. Alright, in the top left corner we have... The red Zerg player is hailing from the, the I don't know, well, he's French, of course, but I'm, I'm not sure if I should say this because I'm not completely sure where Clem is from. Either way, his name is Stefano. I'm going to look this up. Where is Clem from? Clem, Clem, my boy. Oh, he's also from French, from the France, from another France person. Francaise. I should have known. I see. I, I, actually, I did look this up before. Either way, it's the blue Terran player. He goes by the name of Clem. How was game one? Only Son Ives on game two. Dulu trying to get the inside information here. We got the old versus the new French people. Who will take the honor for the French right here? Will it be Stefano or will it be Clem? <laughs> we'll have to watch and see what happens. Clem going around for that early scout. Nothing too crazy going on so far. Very standard macro opening builds once more. Hmm. Stefano is dual citizen. Ah, oh, Tunisia as well. I guess that already gives him kind of kind of an advantage, doesn't it? Being a man of the world. As well as Clem might still be a little bit more nervous with this many people watching. You know what, with this many people watching, I would expect some sort of lag going on as well. I just hope it won't be me. You know? Qualified from Africa <laughs> in the past. Oh my god. Yeah, Stefano, number one in the foreigner's heart, isn't he? Like that that is the one the one guy that, that just managed to bring the games to the Koreans right from the get-go. And just like oh my god, the stories you hear about Stefano about just showing up somewhere with like a broken keyboard or something like that, and then just still Destroying everyone there. Oh, what's up, Creed? How you doing, buddy? We're just watching Stefano versus Clem. Nothing, nothing crazy going on here. We got an engineering bay book from Clem. <laughs> that must be annoying for Stefano here. But then again, he must be completely, completely uh, capable of dealing with this rather quickly. He has the queens. He has the zerglings. It's gonna take a little while before he puts that uh, that hatchery down, but it shouldn't take too long. Ooh, Clem, if he gets that drone though, that could be devastating. No, he doesn't. He doesn't even try, though. You gotta admit the effort there. Reaper does go down, unfortunately. Hellions on the way, though. They won't get there in time. Okay, okay. Things calming down again. 
Yep, yep, you're not getting a lot done there, Hellions. Ooh, Cloak Banshees actually from Clem as well. Hellions and Cloak Banshees. Now, this is something you used to see a lot more in the earlier on stages of uh, TVC. I guess people do still do it sometimes now again. At least when I came back, I started doing this as well. But I feel like, you know, it has fallen a little bit to the wayside. And Stefano getting the beautiful scout here, already seeing this being researched and uh, the, the Starport doing things on the, with the tech lab. So he already most likely knows that this is Banshee. Or at least he has to take into account that Banshees are on the way that have Cloak as well. What do we see as a response? He's getting his lay attack, so most likely he will have his uh, overseers out in time. Also getting some more colors, okay. Okay, I'm not questioning Stefano's timings. I'm sure he is completely aware of everything that is going on. And knows how to counter it perfectly. Two evolution chains going down as well. I gotta say, I kind of like that with the Hellions and the Banshees. Uh, with the amount of queens that he has, he should be able to be safe here and uh, hold off this aggression rather nicely, not take too much damage and now just taking that advantage and turning it into an even bigger advantage by ensuring that he has the upgrades that he needs to continue on in a later stage in this match. Benji trying to come in. Hellions actually still managing to get a couple of... Oh my god, that's quite a couple actually. That's eight drones going down there. I thought the things would be a little bit more quicker on the draw maybe to take down the Hellions. The Hellions people down now. Overseer has been created. Chasing down his Banshee. The Banshee shouldn't be able to do anything anymore. The Queens need to go to the north. Alright. Yeah, the Banshee should go down here. Stefano! Stefano, no! Alright, never mind feel like he might have been able to do this, but there is a second Benji as well that kind of took his focus. Didn't get any kills yet though, so... Got to see. Only, well, eight workers being killed, but that is for the cost of six Hellions and, uh, well, two Benchies. Well, one, one stranded Benji now. These Benchies, they are still alive, I suppose, but it's going to be very difficult for him to do anything else. And, and yeah, there it goes. Down goes the Benji. Very unfortunate there. Did I actually... Oh, oh, gotta check whether or not... Yeah, okay, I updated my... Uh, my thingamajig. The title of the stream, so people know what players I am casting right now. I hear a zergling nibbling here. Oh, it's on an SUV. <laughs> it's like, where's this nibbling coming from? Taking down the rocks as well early on. I love this. This is very well done by Stefano. Ensuring that he has a nice multiple path uh, pathways to uh, do any type of counter aggression, or he gets his flanks rolling as soon as Clem tries to move out on the map here. Double drop going down just here to do nice and creep. Nothing too crazy. Trying to make things, you know, what Stefano's life a little bit more difficult. Getting an overlord or two. I'm just gonna pick up and leave now. at the main wall. Overseers still having vision off these marines. Clem gonna have to pick up once more. Now Stefano doesn't have any links anymore on the opposite side. Uh, the Banshee has cleared him up. But then again, Clem not really in a good position here to move out. He only has three, well he has three siege tanks. I suppose if he was new thermal right now, he would be moving out with those siege tanks and he would be trying to get damage done with them as well. Clem playing it a little bit more safe though. Staying in his base, only going out with the standard two medivacs. Filled up with marines. And there we go, we hear that that boost going off from the medivacs there in the background. Didn't fully get the rooks though. Well they're low, I suppose. It's not the worst. Uh, Clem seeing what is going on on that high ground as well. Just a little bit of a cat and mouse game here. Actually, let us see in the production tab. Infestation pit on the way. Plus two, plus two as well for both players. So no one's really going to get an advantage there. Um, Stefano, though, on four bases. Uh, Clem only just now putting down his four CC. It's not the worst for Clem, though. Obviously, Zerg. Easier to get that fourth base rolling. 
Um, the hive is on the way. I'm curious to see what he will do with this. I'm. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I'm moving out actually with all the siege tanks. This is quite a good opportunity actually. The hive tag only now just started. Army supply very similar. It's gonna come down to these siege tanks and how they are positioned in this case. But putting them on the high ground, that's a nice move there by Clem. But big surround here coming in from Stefano, denying Clem any space to run to and beautiful clean up from Stefano there. Very unfortunate for Clem, did not notice that. Uh, <laughs> that entire rush coming in from behind. Losing most of his army there. Still, he's not going to die immediately. But let's take a look. Yeah, Stefano is just making more and more drones now. Going up to uh, above 80 drones. Actually, above 90 drones at this time. And I'm still kind of want to see what tech he is going to put down with this hive tech. I'm expecting the Ultralisk then to come down. Just because of the upgrades for the, uh, the melee. We will see also, of course, we don't have a Spire anywhere near, but maybe it's just going to be uh, the Vipers, actually. He hasn't put any Ultralisk Kevin down whatsoever, so yeah, maybe it is just going to be for the Vipers. And the Vipers are a very strong position against the Siege Tanks, of course. Especially after resetting that Siege Tank count, just having a couple of vi uh, Vipers, being able to deny those other Siege Tanks from doing anything, that's, that might be a very devastating blow. And... Um, I feel like as soon as those Vipers are up in energy, Stefano is going to try to put on some aggression here onto the uh, the French Terran player. Has to run here from these banks, doesn't want to lose these Marines too quickly. And even with Clem going around, trying to deny so much creep, Stefano is still managing to get quite a bit going here. Almost halfway across the map. It's not the best that you know what I've ever seen, but it's still very admirable, considering how much effort Clem is putting into just denying the creep. Going around with full filled up medevacs with Marines, solely with their goal to deny this creep here. Planetary Fortress, a mine as well, Stefano. Are you actually going to move out? He is max supply here. Getting a little bit of a bank. Maybe he wants to deal with these two dropships before he actually does move out. But with the Vipers, that's going to be a lot easier of a task to do. He's going to just harpoon them in. Oh, look at this. Beautifully positioning those hydras here. Fully realizing the most logical path for Clem to take with those medevacs. And Clem now moving out with his siege tanks. Unseen stone. Zergens already right on top of him. There's a lot more siege tanks in the back row. Stefano not here with his full force. Does have to retreat. But does get a nice cluster of siege tanks there. It's going to make it so much easier for his vipers to just blinding cloud those siege tanks that are still available. There's only four siege tanks available, guys. That is not a lot. Clem, I don't think he can commit here onto the creep at all. Um might actually want to really watch out for these. Oh boy, this is looking very dangerous. This is probably just going to get cleaned up here. Especially after those two medevacs running away. Those vipers coming in. Don't even really have to do anything. Stefano looking to take this game. Quite convincingly. There's still a planetary fortress, but there's just so much Zerg. There's so much Zerg. And I think this must be GG for the clan. He tried so hard. Very curious what happened in that first game where he did manage to secure a win. But right here, right now, it looks like he's gonna take too much damage from the French third player Stefano. Clem still holding on though, doesn't want to lose this match. Yeah. Trying to stay strong. Not giving up. Sir Don't, thank you very much for the follow. Been hanging out for a while, finally deciding to drop that follow. <laughs> Very much appreciate it. Remember to zoom out. All right, all right, all right. I will, Bonzi. All right, I got too excited, okay? The adrenaline is really coming in here. Clam in a lot of herds. Look at the supply. 130 versus 200 for the Zerg. 
90 works for the Zerg available as well. As soon as like Clem could beat this entire Zerg army without any trouble, and Stefano would still be in a pretty good position. And what I mean with without any trouble, he could like if, even if he didn't lose any Terran units right here in this engagement, Stefano would still be in quite a good position for this game. But here we go, Vipers putting down beautiful blinding clouds on top of the entire army. Hydral is coming in, taking down all the siege things. Once more, the fourth base being denied. Is he gonna push up this ramp though? There's quite a bit of a cool cave still for the Terran army, but there's oh my god, Clem, Clem, what are you doing to yourself? I'm not sure if it's still a winnable position here for Clem, but he, he doesn't want to give up, and I do not blame him. Maybe he just wants to make this moment last a little bit longer, playing against Stefano. Yeah, best of three series in the WCS. Who can blame him for that? Who can blame him for that? He still has two siege tanks here, the Zergen is already on top of it. Clem, GG's, there we go, Stefano taking this series 2-1. to one. Well played by Stefano.